Greetings fellow Smashers, the Green Scorpion here, and as of the time of this video, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate has been out for about 3 months now. And to the surprise of no one, it's awesome! The mechanics are a nice improvement from Smash 4, the presentation is top notch, the roster is much more than what we could have asked for, and to think we're going to be getting more over the next year! Smash Ultimate has become one of the biggest games of the current generation, and the community is going crazy over it. People have talked about the characters, the stages, the bosses, the movesets, and for today's countdown, I'm going to be talking about the music, specifically the remixes. Smash Brothers is no stranger to remixing some of our favorite themes from the franchises it pulls from, and we adore it every single time. Whether the remix brings in new instruments, rearranges the composition, or even changes the genre of the song as a whole, it's a treat every time solely from the experience of hearing something that's both old and new. But before we move on, let's get some rules down. In regards to Smash Ultimate, I'm going to be focusing on the new remixes that were introduced in this game and not any introduced in previous titles. Even with that restriction, that's still four and a half hours worth of music. I'm also going to be enacting my one per franchise rule for the sake of variety, otherwise this countdown would be riddled with Castlevania themes. And finally, criteria. I'm looking for overall musical quality, how well it fits in the realm of Smash Brothers, instrumentation, composition, and most importantly, how well it implements the new in conjunction with what made the original theme great in the first place. And with that, it's time to let the music do the talking. Let's take a listen to the top 10 Super Smash Bros. Ultimate remixes. The Galaga Medley is essentially an amalgamation of the original sounds from the Galaga arcade game put into a musical composition, and that's seriously impressive. It's also very fitting since the arrangement was directed by Yusuke Takahama, who's done plenty of other remixes for the Smash Bros. franchise. Backed up by a hard-hitting percussion that creates a very distinguished rhythm, the melody of the song uses the intro theme, abduction theme, and even the sound effects from the original Galaga, and that really plays up the nostalgia factor. It's also nice to hear the chiptune sound effects mixing together with updated electronic instruments. They even throw in an electric guitar and synthesizer to turn the song into a modern rock theme, giving us a melody that actually harkens back to the Galaga arrangement game from the Namco Museum collection. It's a celebration of how far video games have come, while still making sure we remember where it all started. By increasing the tempo and providing a more hard-hitting percussion, the musical adept known as Tomori Kudo managed to turn this laid-back title theme from the original Animal Crossing into a catchy and enjoyable battle theme. The pipe organ takes up the melody and harmony nicely with a bass guitar, piano, and strings providing backup. Despite using more traditional orchestra instruments, this theme does not skimp on its intensity thanks to the speed and its forte dynamics. I also really like the variety presented here. Later in the song, the strings take up the melody backed by additional instruments like a piccolo and acoustic guitars, and then we get a seriously sweet solo provided by an expertly played banjo. I also feel the need to mention the funk rhythm that comes in soon after that's followed by a key change. 
While not as intense or as epic as some of the other themes we'll be talking about later down the line, this theme still gives us a joyful yet thrilling composition, perfect for a fast-paced brawl while still sounding right at home in Animal Crossing. And speaking of turning charming little tunes into epic battle themes, you can tell Yoko Shimomura was having fun with Cass's theme. You guys might know Yoko Shimomura for being one of the biggest musical names in the gaming industry, particularly for Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts, and this won't be the last of her works we hear on this list. What I find interesting about this remix is that the melody is slower than the original, and yet the intensity is seriously amplified thanks to a rapid percussive rhythm. This is done by transforming the theme from a 3-4 time signature waltz into an 8-4 time signature ballad, which gives the melody more of a soaring feeling while the percussion has more beats to fill up. Meanwhile, we have the classic accordion taking up the melody backed by a string ensemble of violins, violas, and a string bass, but then the melody is embellished with a beautifully played violin and the two go into a gorgeous duet as the song nears its conclusion. I have to admit, The Legend of Zelda had quite a few candidates to choose from, including Termina Field and the Breath of the Wild main theme. But after hearing the sheer amount of creativity and passion they applied to Cass's theme, the choice was very clear. The Mega Man franchise gave me so much to choose from. Honorable mentions to Central Highway and the Mega Man 4 medley. However, I had to go with this dance-worthy theme right here, arranged by Hideki Sakamoto, who is best known for his work in the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games. Right away, this remix of Snake Man stage hits hard with accented violins and drums followed by a well-executed slap bass. From there, the melody kicks in starting with mezzo piano violins before building into a forte dynamic electric guitar melody backed by bass strings and a synthesizer. Unlike our previous entries, which had to be seriously tailored for a fighting game, I imagine the mindset for this theme was to simply jazz up an already kinetic song, and there's something to be admired when a hard-hitting rock theme can incorporate the soft sounds of a string ensemble. The creativity can be heard throughout the entire piece, making it a pleasant theme to not only battle to, but also to just listen to. I should expect no less from the same guy who gave us that awesome Primal Dialga theme. Seriously, it's something about violins and a rock theme. 
The Castlevania series entered the Smash Brothers scene with style, giving us a myriad of awesome themes to choose from. Divine Bloodlines and Cross Your Heart made the choice very difficult, but in the end, I had to give it to Out of Time from the original Castlevania. The theme builds up with a crescendo of strings before striking with a melody of electric guitars and violins, turning this song into a real headbanger. The percussion keeps up the intensity with a constant forte dynamic backed by a slew of bass guitars. This theme oozes intensity and urgency with a rock-style fit for a fighting game. Appropriate since this is the work of Yasushi Asada, the same guy responsible for the soundtrack of Castlevania Judgment. Come to think of it, he also remixed Divine Bloodlines for this game. No wonder I had so much trouble choosing. We all lost our minds at the arrival of Ridley in Smash Ultimate. And not only that, we got arguably the most badass villain theme in the game. Versus Ridley is a constant storm of intensity with strong electric guitars, borderline violent percussive rhythm, and a wave of powerful synthesizers to give this theme the sci-fi feel. You'd think that would get monotonous after a while, but this theme pulls off some really neat tricks. First, Yusuke Takahama shows off his creativity by incorporating a few different styles, from the use of the synthesizer to give us an atmospheric tune, to the use of a child's music box to convey the feeling of fear, anxiety, and cosmic wonder all at once. It's like something straight out of a horror movie. Second, just like the original theme, Versus Ridley switches between three different time signatures, giving us a theme that's intentionally discordant in its own composition. Seriously, take a listen to this. That's not easy to pull off, and yet Metroid's been doing it for years, all for the purpose of putting the player in a state of unease any time they face off against Samus' greatest adversary. All in all, Ridley is a lot of things. A dragon, an alien, a pirate... But this theme lets us know what he truly is at the end of it all. A monster. I'm weak, guys. Seriously, Snake Eater is my favorite theme in all of gaming, and to hear it remixed into an epic yet soulful rock theme? I was brought to tears. And again, violins in a rock theme. Why is that so awesome to listen to? The Snake Eater remix in Smash Ultimate is the handiwork of Nobuko Toda, and I could not have asked for someone better to arrange this theme, as she was responsible for the original Metal Gear Solid 3 soundtrack. By increasing the tempo and adding electric guitars, this song becomes a fierce battle theme while still keeping true to the narrative context the song came from. Hence the retaining of the strings, timpani drums, and those wonderful, WONDERFUL trumpets and horns. I was happy enough to have Snake back in Smash Ultimate, but once I heard this amazing remix, I felt like I was in a dream.
the amount of passion and love that was given to this piece of music is apparent from the very start. Here we have another one of Yoko Shimomura's works, and in my opinion, it's one of the best themes she has ever produced. The Vegas Stage remix stands out among the soundtrack by giving us a striking flamenco theme complete with pianos, acoustic guitars, and those beautiful violins. Then that brilliant percussion kicks in and keeps up the rhythm along with the guitars while giving us a variety of dynamics throughout. I also love how the melody is passed along between the violin, piano, and guitar to give us several different takes on this famous Spanish tune. I feel I should also mention that Yoko Shimomura is most famous for her work on the piano, and that is made immediately clear with that arpeggiated introduction and incredibly clean ivory melody. Now I'm sure you guys are wondering what I think of Guile's theme. Honestly, I had a ton of trouble picking between the two. But for the sheer amount of inventiveness and variation, yeah, sorry Guile, Vega wins this round. I gotta be honest guys, I was rather unimpressed by most of Splatoon's remixes in this game. But holy moly does Bomb Rush Blush make up for it! This theme comes to us thanks to the musical genius Tomoya Otani, who is most famously known for his work in the Sonic franchise. The original Bomb Rush Blush was already very enjoyable, but by increasing the tempo, adding synthesizers and bells, and playing around with styles at certain intervals of the theme, Bomb Rush Blush is turned into an exciting and powerful dance theme. I also have to mention how they expertly utilize the inkling vocals with sound modifications and the addition of a reverb. The harmonization during the second segment of the song always gives me goosebumps and I love how the theme shifts its bass line with funk and even some dubstep. Truth be told, I found it hard to believe that this was a remix at first. I could have totally believed this to have been in the original Splatoon. I suppose that also speaks for this theme's versatility. It's great for dancing, it's great for battle, and honestly, it's just great to listen to. It was no freaking contest. Gangplank Galleon had this countdown locked from day one. You guys were all there. When we saw the King K. Rule trailer and heard this incredible big band rendition of Gangplank Galleon, our hearts were stolen by this giant reptile and his big brass belly. The Gangplank Galleon remix is brought to us again by Tomori Kudo, and sir, I cannot thank you enough. Immediately our attention is grabbed by the blasting fanfare of trumpets and trombones, followed by the drums providing a strong and heavy rhythm. Then the tempo builds up until the theme enters the main melody, and good lord I love this song! The brass section goes nuts with a fortissimo dynamic backed by trombones and bass strings until we are treated to a funk rhythm with the percussion taking center stage. Then we get treated to a vocal segment and I swear that's Funky Kong singing. I refuse to believe it's anyone else. The entire song builds with a constant crescendo as the final segment treats us to a roar of brass instruments 
vocals, and a key change so good they had to do it twice. At the end of the day, the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate soundtrack is filled to the brim with amazing music that celebrates the history of Nintendo. But if someone asked me to prove it with one song, you can be sure that this is the song I would show them. I am the Green Scorpion, music is awesome, Smash Ultimate is awesome, and I'm looking forward to more.